Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to create what I'd like to call the annihilation effect, or you could call it the approximate annihilation effect. And it's basically what we're trying to do is create a kind of shimmering wall that looks like we're going through another dimension. And I got the idea from this movie, which is actually a pretty good movie. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Unreal Engine and we're going to go to games and blank, a blank game. We're going to want this environment and here I'm just going to annihilation. I've stumbled through this a couple times already today. So this is like my third time trying to do this. There's a couple little areas where it's easy to misstep and so, you know, with Unreal Engine, you know how it is. So anyway, we're in our blank project and we got this wonderful environment already set up for us, which is fantastic. So we want to bring the starter content in now. So if we had added the starter content in the beginning, it would have taken us into an office space, which I didn't want. So I'm going to go add features content. And this is the only thing you can add as a starter content. So you go to add to project and it comes in and we're good then. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be primarily working with what's called a post-process volume, which is basically has all our film tools and grading tools and we can add visual effects that way. And so it's very interesting how Unreal has configured this. But anyway, we go into plus, down to visual effects and post-process volume. So you know how they say fix it in post? It's basically we're able to bring the post in you can think of it as a, in the pre-stage, so it's interesting. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, oh, the other thing I always do is I'm going to edit, down to edit preferences, and I have to type in orbit, and this is for my navigation. I cannot function in Unreal without this being enabled, so I don't understand why it's not enabled by default. But if you hold down Alt, then it allows you to rotate around an object. And I don't know how you could get around in 3D without being able to do that. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to create this kind of shimmering wall thing. So if I hit the space bar, I can toggle through the and get to the scaling. And I'm just going to make this, normally I'd make this more of like just a wall shape. But I want to make this pretty big because we want to be inside of it to see our effects. So let me zoom out here a little bit and hit all and see what we've got here. I might want to make it pretty tall. In the movie, it's literally a wall that fills up the sky. So it's it's pretty intimidating in the, the movie. It's very weird. So we're just going to get inside the box here. Make sure I'm inside of it. Let's see. I'll make it right here. I should be inside of it by now. So one way I can tell I'm inside of it is by innate, you know starting to mess with the effects. So we'll kind of just look at the sky here and we'll hang out in this position. So now that I make sure I'm in the post-process volume, the one thing that's cool about this effect is that you can have a lot of creative license with it. So there's no right or wrong with a lot of these settings. So like bloom, that might be nice to add. And we can bump up the intensity and see the effect it has. It's only having an effect inside the box. Once I get out, you won't see that effect. So we can bo boost the bloom, that sounds weird to say. Then I think we want chromatic aberration because that's a very, the whole movie is about chromatic aberration. <laughs> and then uh, let's see what else, color, grading, global, saturation. I think we do want some colors because if we look at the picture here, it's kind of this teal violet kind of color. So let's see what we can add in that direction. Maybe something straight up there, something like that. Just boost that up. And I don't know, you can just go in here and just add things until your heart content. Now, as you're scrolling down this list and it gets to be too much, you can right click and collapse things as you go. So now we're just gonna go into rendering here, rendering features, post process materials. And it's very easy to click on the wrong things here and get lost but we want to click this little button to add an element and we're going to go choose asset reference and we click that arrow next to where it says none and we're going to create a material a new material and i think i'm just going to call this m underscored annihilation effects and you can call it whatever you want to and then we go save now that it's saved, it's just not showing over here how to get to it is if I click on that folder, it's right there. And I can click on it and it takes me into the material editor. 
and this is where I want to be. So now I can just drag this up and dock it. And I can just save it right now. Now I'm going to scoot this over to the right. And this is where basically the the meat and the potatoes of this project is right here. So everybody has different ways of working. Just find the way that works for you. This is what works for me. I know that we need nine things. So I'm going to pretend like we're going to the grocery store and I'm just going to get everything that I need and then I'm going to put everything together like I'm baking. So that's how I'd prefer to do this. So I know I need two texture coordinates. So I'm going to type that in right now. We can do that again because I need two of them. I'm going to put one up here. I'm going to drag one down here. We don't have to do anything with these. We're not going to adjust any settings on these. We're going to need something called the pattern, and this is what's going to give us our motion. Animate this for us. This is going to be an animated effect. So we click pattern, and I'll put that there. And I know already that this is going to go into here, so I'll just plug that in. The next thing I know I need is a texture sample, so I'm going to hold down T on the keyboard and click, and it comes right in. We're looking for a very specific effect, so this is why we needed the starter content. So we're actually going to come over here and click there, and we're looking for T underscore water. So actually we're taking a water normal map, to, and this is what will create our shimmeringness, which makes sense, right? So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into here, like that. And then a couple other things. I'm just going to grab all these things kind of at once now. So I know that we're going to need a parameter, so a scalar. So I'm going to hit S and click, and uh, I'm going to name this Strength being clicked on it, I'm going to set the default value of it very low. Oops, just to 0.1. And, and I know from experience that's a good place to start. And then you can come back and uh, play with all these later. Then we're going to need, let me go ahead and just get the rest of these. We're going to need an add node. So we hit A and click. A and click. We need a multiply node. We click M and click. And we're going to need a mask, so we're going to right click for that one. And that's um, under mass, under math, excuse me. So it's a mask under math, it's a component mask. So that we're going to need this to subtract some of our channels. And then the last thing that we're going to need is a scene texture. So I'm going to right click for that one and scene texture. Oops, scene, texture, right here. Now how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you have nine, you've got everything that you need. And then this is going to end up going something like this, our workflow. Now the only thing that's really important to set is on our panning in here we got to set a low value to start with. We're going to type in 0 0.05 and 0 0.05, and all these values can be set. On here, the only thing we need to set is move it from screen color to post process input zero. And believe it or not, there's one other thing we need to do, and that is here under material domain. I should have done this from the very beginning. Set it to post process. And how I know I needed to do that, you should only see emissive color here. If you see anything other than emissive color lit up, something's wrong. That means you need to set your material domain. So with all that done, we don't have anything left to set. We don't have to adjust these. We set these to 0 0.05, 0 0.05 on the X and Y. Nothing to adjust there, nothing to adjust there, nothing to adjust there. We set this to 0 0.1. We literally just have to hook everything up. And that's why I kind of like doing it this way. So to each his own, right? So the mask, this RGB is going to go into mask. This is going to go into multiply. This is going to go into multiply. This is going to go into add. Oops. This is going to go into add. And this is going to go into UVs. And this is going to go into emissive color. And as soon as we do that, you can see our effect. And by playing with these values here, the 0, 05, and the strength, and actually the UV tiling, you can adjust that effect. But that's good enough for what we're going to do. So then we just go apply and save. 
and we just click back here and there is our effect in our scene so if I hit play I can kind of come around the scene and I don't see anything right until I get to the wall now I should probably put something in the scene here hold on a sec so let me hit escape for a sec I'm losing my reference so let's go to here and add a basic shape just a cube or something is that in the world yeah so just so I can see where I'm going <laughs> so let's hit play and if I back up so here we are on our movie and we're like yeah the aliens have landed you know and then I don't know I'm getting scared Johnny what the hell something ain't right <laughs> where's Natalie Portman I'm getting out of here I feel weird now what happened to us you know you get it right <laughs> so anyway I hope you found this helpful take care and have a great day